Like I want mm. that these games to be able to continue to exist and be played. And whether that means remake them in a, you know, pixel, you know, like pixel art, 2d HD, you know, kind of setting or, uh, you know, but yeah, bring it back and also make it 16 by nine. Cause uh, anytime I have to play a game mm-hmm. that's got the bars on the side, I'm like, come on. What like, is this widescreen? This like, is yeah, ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And then, um, uh, yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I think a lot of uh, those games, like the pixel art, I think I think they still hold up well uh, if you just give them, you know, uh, like a resolution update. Mm-hmm. Give it that 1080 or that 4K sheen, but don't like ah, some of the remasters, like GTA is a great example. They kind of just ruin it, yeah. you know? It's, um, it's a risk for, for for sure i think the game's unique in its art style like final fantasy with the pixel or like borderlands with the cell shading yeah uh that's kind of how you create something that okay this was fun when it came out i'm gonna play this again in 20 20 years because it's still fun still looks great still it's kind of like unique to this game right that's the most surprising thing that when i look back because i used to be a like a diehard Nintendo fanboy mm-hmm. and when the it was the GameCube era and that was right around the, I think the PS2 like I think that's this the same generation um, mm-hmm. maybe my uh, <laughs> maybe I'm half Parkinson's but <laughs> the uh, when, right around that time it was uh, they were showing off Zelda and they were showing off this adult link and the graphics from you know it was like you know beautified up uh, f- from uh, you know, like uh, Ocarina, Ocarina from, right, 64 from 64 to GameCube, yeah, exactly. So we're like, <laughs> yes, and then we got Wind Waker. And when they showed off Wind Waker, like I uh, and a lot of us were like, what the very hell? different from the traditional, the, yeah, the GameCube, it's for kids, and it's like, come on, and it's like. That's where after the GameCube, you see Nintendo really make the shift into like a whole different direction. They're like, we're not going to be able to compete with Microsoft and Sony in terms of power. We're going to sell our our systems at a profit <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and not subsidize it because we're not picking up the third parties anymore. That became a whole, you know, all that became extra competition for them uh, because the third party wants to, you know, yeah, I'll put my game everywhere. Um, but we saw that and I was so frustrated. I was so angry because I felt bamboozled and with that Nintendo, I was like, what are you doing? But here one we are. One of the best Zelda games. One, it's, I would say probably the top five. Easily. You're going to put it number one? Uh, one or two for sure. I'm I think a, Link to the I'm Past. I'm a slut for Ocarina of Time. I, like a, I, I think one. Ocarina is, is probably my number four. I think Link to the Past could probably be my number one. Um, but uh, like, but now the one thing that the only thing that pisses me off about wind waker now is it's not on the switch yeah not yet not yet they will i'm sure do a port within the next year or two yeah but that's also kind of the genius of cell shading like it's timeless Mm -hmm. now it makes those games look really good the artistic direction the art style of these games doesn't feel like all of a sudden you go back with that blood demon with the you know with a uh, you know a polygon you know virtual yeah. fighter 2 yeah, oh yeah there's a big yeah <laughs> like wow there's a big gap in and in, in that visual fidelity where that Wind old, Waker, uh, godzilla uh, movie with matthew broderick sticks out to me mm. that one aged horribly <laughs> <laughs> so bad yeah absolutely what else are you doing right now what uh what's going on in the in your world of comedy and you're uh, doing the trivia stuff as well like how is that going uh yeah just getting the trivia started we had 90s trivia last night at a bar about 30 minutes away um really upsetting actually 1990 first rap song to hit number one on the top 100 billboard charts any guesses um 1990 what the uh uh what was the uh the kids the um they had they were dun, the dun, 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 dun. Oh, dun, 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 dun. it was ice ice baby yeah okay <laughs> which is just like fine what, Chris I, guess. Cross. Yeah, I was i was i was thinking of crisscross where they were like uh, i remember that being i guess sometime maybe that was in the 80s too who knows it might have been late 80s early 90s but I, that was just like one of the trivia questions i was like damn really really like straight out of compton was there like two years earlier nothing okay no no love for tone loke no love all right that's fine vanilla ice he's the guy <laughs> that was so that's so funny so interesting too because that song was everywhere so then yeah. is the ninja turtles movie I and it's still a fun an song oh it is but didn't yeah. he rip that off wasn't that 
Uh, I don't think he ripped it. I think he got permission. It's the uh, the hook or the riff, whatever they call it, from Under Pressure by mm -hmm. David Bowie. Yeah. Or is that Queen? Or is it Bowie and Queen? Well, a lot of music is inspired, etc. So yeah, it's always interesting. Yeah, it wasn't like a Robin Thicke stealing music from Marvin Gaye situation, though, where like mm -hmm. Vanilla Ice, I don't think, got sued by anybody for using that riff. Interesting. Man. <laughs> it's a whole whole realm absolutely so what else is going on with you and in, uh, in your neck of the woods oh nothing too exciting outside of that just uh hitting mics trying to get some more venues booked for trivia yeah how, how does that process go like what what is that just you cold calling a lot of these like locations and be like um, let me bring some trivia to you so yeah pretty much cold calling i just pop in uh right now i'm hunting for venues that don't have trivia or events kind of going on that night just because yeah. you know i'm not i'm only working with two venues right now so i don't have like a good portfolio or a consistent audience built up yet mm -hmm. to kind of show uh, but my goal a year from now is get working with at least five venues so i'm doing trivia every night of the week it's an extra hour to an hour and a half of host time really clean yeah. So that's reps at the gym, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, and then at that point, I can go down to one of the breweries in town here uh, that has like one of these companies do trivia mm -hmm. where they're paying like 400 bucks a night for a trivia night. Wow. And the company is just paying some kid 50 bucks an hour providing the decks. They just show up with their laptop and host. I'll do all that for 300. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'll cut you a deal. Yeah. Like that's business is what it is <laughs> just awesome, providing a product for cheaper yeah and hopefully a better product too you're like all right let's we had some fun yeah we've only done two so far but they've both been really fun even with lower turnout like yeah. compared to an open mic where you know maybe six people show up and they just look like they're kind of held hostage all night you know what i mean mm -hmm uh you know five six people show up at trivia all right we just turn it into six teams and it's kind of everyone against everyone it makes it that little fun competitive gamey game um so it's been fun i'm uh looking forward to growing it nice dude nice i was uh i've been i've had a uh, bad luck the last uh last two weeks so i've I put my uh you know register because they changed up the arena so you can actually like you, you fill out the form mm -hmm. beforehand let them know ahead of time let them know ahead of time and then both times so last week and this week like uh kids got sick and mm. so i emailed uh i uh i messaged uh the host and i was like hey it's me again yeah <coughs> not gonna make it i know my son down it's like no and that's that's like the worst thing about the in advance sign up because like now that's a bad look for you like hey brian i want to sign up this week oh your kid's gonna get sick again i don't know man i can't control that i know the other the thing i'm i'm just sitting here i'm thinking i'm gonna have to do like next week when i sign up it's literally been like the day of hey i'm actually coming today <laughs> yeah like a little confirmation <laughs> like i'm gonna confirm that i'm going to be there for you guys Warm. 